This is possibly the world's very best golf drill. But I'm not just gonna show you one version of it. We're gonna take it just a little bit further so you can modify it to your specific needs. And when you understand why and what you need to do, you will be shocked at how quickly you can help figure out so many aspects all on your own without complication. It is so simple, you might even be annoyed that you haven't been doing this constantly. The main drill that I'm talking about, which isn't like, well, hey, brand new, I've done content on it before, and many other people have used this. I actually spent several months when I was trying to get good at this stupid game, standing with my feet and knees together and making swings, okay? Why is this so good? Why is having your feet and knees together so good for a goal swing? Well, even then, <laughs> just demonstrating it, I didn't do it quite right because my sequence was a little bit out of whack meaning I made a backswing, and I, but my intention as I came through, I kind of used my upper body too much. Even on a mini swing like this, it's important to allow the arms to win the race, just a little bit coming down here, and to collect and release through. But one of the benefits of this is not just balance, it is that sequence, but it really does show us where our faults lie. But when you do the feet together, and knees together, we can still cheat a little bit. We can still sort of split the legs somewhat. We can still move and counterbalance our body. If you see like dead straight on here, I can cheat a little bit and stay theoretically centered. By having my feet together, I can move my body over this way. So technically I'm sort of moving off the ball, but I'm counterbalancing myself with the lower body here. If I didn't turn or counterbalance somewhat, and I went that way, I'm going to fall over. But I can overemphasize and counterbalance. So that's something to sort of be aware of that you can sort of cheat this a little bit. But as a baseline, practicing your feet and knees together is exceptional for so many different facets of your golf swing. But as I said, we need to take it a little bit further and understanding why. So there's a couple of variants, and it is going to depend on what your tendencies are. It's also going to depend on what type of swing plane you are. We're gonna go into this a lot more in the near future, but there are basically three types of swing plane, and it mostly is dictated by your anatomy, and going against it is making life so much harder for you when it comes to the golf swing. Your arm length, your height, your wingspan, your forearm length compared to your upper arm. Just those factors alone play a huge role in what you can, can't, and probably shouldn't try and do in the golf swing. We're not gonna be able to cover that in this lesson, but it is the start of what we're talking about that makes the difference. The three swings basically come down to the plane that we're moving down on as we get back to the ball. We have shoulder plane, where it's the line of the club is a bit more nearer the shoulder, right? That's gonna generally happen, and that's me, where the arms are longer than the height. You know, I'm almost 6'2", but I've got a big wingspan. So no matter what I try and do, my arms are always going to be a bit further away from me compared to someone who has shorter arms than their wingspan. You know, literally, they're gonna be like three, four inches more this way, for example. So it's gonna be easier for them to get more shallow and in here. But we have the shoulder plate we have a torso plane, which is where most golf instruction focuses on, but actually a very small percentage of people are within that range. It's quite ironic, I know, but we're gonna learn more about this in the future, don't worry. Then we also have the hip plane with you know, a shorter tendency, uh, shorter arms and a tendency to be sort of lower, deeper, and can actually get a bit more rounded this way. But those things are affected dramatically by even the setup that we do and how we pivot on the backswing. We're gonna do a little test. Stand up right now. You don't even need a club. We're gonna put our feet and knees together. But first of all, I want us to put the right foot forward so my heels are aligned with the toes and I'm standing very narrow, okay? And I'm going to try and stay balanced within that center. 
Initially, you might find yourself leaning one way or the other, and I was talking about counterbalancing. And you'll notice that at setup here, you're going to be moving your hips a little bit more this way. Because of the, the way the setup is forcing us to sort of balance and move. If I keep the hips back this way, that's going to feel very awkward, especially when I try and make my rotation behind. I'm off balance this way. And that's what's happening to many of you because you're setting up incorrectly and you're not able to pivot correctly. So this test is good for you know the setup, but also the pivot what we need. So I want you to put your feet this way and I want you to make some rotations, but I want you to almost feel that your right knee is going behind your left, like so. We're kind of going nice and slowly. And I want you to be aware of where your balance feels, what, what feels a bit more natural to you. What, how can you sort of balance and get the rotation, get the hips behind, pointing the butt to the target and keeping our head nice and steady. I want that sensation here. And what you'll notice is this is creating a little bit of resistance for the lower body, as it were. So my emphasis has to be to pivot around behind me here. But what that's going to do is going to put me in a very good place to be able to deliver the club downwards on an inside path that way. If I do the same kind of movement and swing, but I put my feet left foot in front, right foot behind, and I have the same setup, like when my hip is a little bit further forward, for a start, I'm fighting going that way. I'm falling this way. It's also going to be easy, uh, rather, it's gonna be easier for me to make a rotation here to get behind and deliver it back down this way. But to get back at the ball, if I just use my arms, I'm gonna be falling backwards and kind of getting stuck a little bit here. And the wild thing is, I spent a long time, many, many years ago, doing a drill with the right foot behind the left. Why was that bad for me? That was bad for me because I was able to get really behind, but now to get back at the ball, I can't just drop the hands because I'm very far back. And it's all dependent on the arm length. If I had slightly shorter arms, for example, it, I could get that chest down back at the ball to cover it. You see, if I had slightly shorter arms, I could get back down and cover the ball. If I did that with my anatomy, try to get back at the ball, look around, the club is way out here. And that's not lack of effort, that's not lack of ability, that's just how I am made. But hitting some shots like this, or practicing with my feet split this way, I start to create some awareness, some calibration of, okay, yeah, that makes sense going here, but it doesn't make quite as much sense getting back to the ball. What does it feel like when I do this? When I put my right foot in front of my left, I can still make a nice tidy backswing. I have to encourage myself to sort of get behind it. But from here, I can just throw those arms down and deliver it back at impact. I have to do very little manipulation. And this is what it all comes down to. It's reducing the feel, the need to manipulate. When you do patterns, movements, drills that are how you are designed, it all becomes a lot easier. You don't have to try as much to make the strike, to make certain moves. It all happens more effortlessly. And doing this test is really going to help you figure where you are. And that is important. You have to test it out to help figure out what does it feel like to me? Where's my balance? What kind of movements do I do? What feels better? And you'll notice also that when you have the different foot positions, as we talked about the hip placement, you are going to start to notice the differences of how you set up. If I have the right foot back, if I have too much weight forward here, I'm going to be dipping behind and catching it a little bit chunky. But if I set up with a bit more balance, with my hips a bit better aligned for this setup, I can calibrate myself and stay a lot more centered and swing through that way and get the chest down and through. But you've got to figure this out for yourself, at least for now, until we've got a really cool program that's coming your way. But if you're not sure, I do still encourage you to put your feet and knees together. 
because that is going to be the mid line from a shoulder plane golfer, like longer arms, very generally speaking, to a hip plane with slightly shorter arms. We're gonna be in the middle. So you can test it out with your feet and knees together to find that sort of baseline to start figuring it out. But play with the foot positions, play with the pivot, the angles at the setup, and start to see what it does and what it feels like to you. This is just scratching the surface and I'm just trying to create some awareness, but it really is the most effective drill you can do because when you get it right for your swing type, the rest really does start to come into fruition, a nice sequence, and it's just easier. So there we have it. Now, this lesson is going to simplify your goals when you're out on the golf course to hit more greens, to hit more fairways. So you can help focus and just deliver a swing that feels more natural without getting in the way with your head. See you next time.